Hey everybody, welcome to our Monday evening devotional and uh, we're proud you decided to be with us today. Hopefully we can learn a lesson that will help us in our everyday walk. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Daniel today, Daniel chapter 3. Thinking about our graduates and uh, some of the things that that's going on with them right now. Uh, while they're not, some of them not getting to go through the graduation ceremony that they would love to go through and, and we're so sorry about that uh thinking more of the time that this is kind of a way of life that's that's in a sense uh come to a close uh a lot of, some will be going straight to work some will be going to college some will be leaving home and going to college some may be going uh going uh staying at home and going to college uh, if you're not graduating, please don't turn us off right here because the lessons that we learned today will be very beneficial to uh, to all of us, I think, whether we're graduating or not. We're going to go back to Daniel chapter 3 and talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, some young men who uh, who were, came to an end of a certain way of life, came came into another uh, part of their life, and uh, we're going to look and see how they handled their faith and, and the things that they did. Uh, once they did this, if you remember, they were taken from their country as captives, and uh, and then because of their their intelligence and because of their looks, they were made an important kind of elite part of the king's men, uh, and it worked their way on up. In chapter three of Daniel, we find Nebuchadnezzar has made this great statue, nine feet wide, ninety feet high, and as he was going to play some music, uh, and when all these musical instruments were heard, the command was to bow down and worship this statue. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a problem with this because they knew God's rules and knew God's law about not bowing down to graven images and, and not having any gods before before him. So uh, when, the, when the music sounded, everyone bowed down except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this made the king mad. There were, of course, some men that were ready to tell on them quickly about uh, uh, not bowing down and went straight to the king and the king called them in before him and these three young men are standing before the king uh, and he questioned them about it and he said uh, he said you know the rules when when the trump when all the trumpet the the psaltery dulcimer all the all kinds of musical instruments when they sound you're to bow down before this uh, before this out this statue and if you don't you'll be thrown into a fiery furnace uh, and then he kind of makes a little smart aleck comment said, and who is that God that you're talking about that will deliver you from this? In other words, uh, the consequence is going to be fiery furnace. So who do you think this God is that can, that can save you from that? And what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tells him, in the start, I'm starting chapter 3, verse 16, is so powerful that these young men uh, are able to say this. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In other words, we really don't have to answer you in this. We've already made our minds up. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So what he's, they're pretty much telling the king is, you know, we know God can save us from this. And we know he's going to help us. However, if he don't, we're still not going to bow down before for your image. In other words, whatever the consequences are, we're going to still remain true to God. I would encourage our each of us every day, and especially our, our young people, decide right now who, who we're going to serve. Are we going to serve God? Or are, we going to, are we going to let the situation we're in or the consequences of, of what may happen decide whether or not we're going to serve God. I, I believe that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had already made their mind up to serve God no matter what the circumstances. Um, there's many many things we can, we can, many examples we have today of this. I use the example of honesty. Do we tell the truth no matter what the circumstances are, or do we wait and decide the circumstances and then decide whether or not we're going to tell the truth, tell half the truth, tell a little white lie, tell a complete lie, however we want to say it, uh, do we let the situation we're in determine how faithful we're going to be? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not. They they, they had decided, had purposed within themselves, we're going to serve God no matter what the consequences are. 
Uh, and I hope uh, whether we're young people going off to school, whether we're young people going to work, whether we're old people that are going back to a job that we've had 30 years or more uh, and, and the things we come into contact with every day, let us decide before we before we go, we're going to serve God no matter what the the uh, situation and no matter what the consequences are. Uh, as we know, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Uh, they were they were then brought out of the fiery furnace. And just want to read quickly verse twenty seven. And uh, I like to this is a good way to end the story. And the princes and governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies and listen to this. The fire had no power, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. I think this is a good lesson to tell us how complete God is. Not only did he save them from burning up in the fire, not only did they not lose their life in the fire, they didn't have any smoke inhalation. Their clothes did not even smell like smoke. So God is, is complete uh, in his salvation and will be in our salvation also. I hope today that we can gather from this to decide today that we're going to serve God no matter the consequences. Uh, and, and young people, as we go to another portion of our, our life, whether it be, like I say, going to work, going to school, uh, staying home or leaving home, decide today that, that you're going to serve God and don't let the consequences uh, of, of whether or not you're honest or whether or not you serve God determine how faithful you're going to be. Let me be honest with you. If I was brought in from the king and told you either bow down or, you, or you're going to get thrown in this fiery furnace and I'm waiting till that moment to decide, hey, wonder what I should do. It might be hard to make the decision, but if I've already decided I'm going to serve God, even if it takes my life, whatever it takes, then uh, be easier to make, make that decision and stay on God's side. If you bow with me, we'll have a prayer. Most high and holy God, thank you for this day. Father, we're so thankful for the young people, uh, the ones of our country of Charlotte Heights, but also those throughout the world, Father, who are graduating. Father, we ask you to be with them. We ask them to choose to serve you. Father, we ask that you give them strength as they as they go out into the world, as we call it. Father, we ask you to, to be with them, be with those that support them. And Father, please help us to always make the decision to serve you and do your will. Father, keep us safe from this pandemic and this virus. Keep us, uh, keep us, please keep us healthy. Father, we pray that that uh, no one in our families, our church family, our work families, uh, are affected by that or get will come down with this virus. Father, we pray for those who lost loved ones because of it. We pray for those who are dealing with it and are sick right now. And Father, we ask your blessings to be upon about all of us. Father, thank you for your word that we can go to. Thank you for the countless examples and stories that you've given us that we can go to and, and find strength and comfort. And Father, please help us always choose to serve you and put you first. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.